if only it wasn't that hot today I would have stayed a lot more but yeah We just got off Plaza de Mayo stop for the Suri or the Soup Day or the subway train. I'm gonna show you around places of interest in Buenos Aires. We are gonna start at the heart, the center of Buenos Aires itself. We are at Plaza de Mayo or May Mayo. They pronounce it as Mayo, I think. It's Plaza de Mayo or May Plaza. And I think this plaza holds the largest Argentinian flag ever that I've seen here and if you can see it although it's not waving right now that's that's huge I will show you this very interesting building this is the equivalent of the White House for Buenos Aires but it's not white it's big so it's called Casa Rosada so literally the pink house and what is, what is Casa Rosada? Casa Rosada is the office of the president of Argentina so he stays here to work but not to sleep you know he has his own residence outside the city center and yeah that's Casa Rosada let me show you I don't think it's real, but that's what my tour guide said. Another interesting fact about this building. If you notice, there's like an extra wing on that side. It's not even. So if you look at it, let's, let's stay in the middle. We are exactly in the middle of the pink house, the Casa Rosada. See that one two and if you look at the left it's one two three why is that well they were actually they demolished the whole um, blocks to make to make this decision and because it's a little bit lopsided there's a street actually right there so they want it to be the center of the um, city but the issue was it wasn't even with the blocks they they didn't want to destroy or make a wrong I don't know architectural construction they want it to be a square right but this should be the center of it but they cannot demolish rest of it so they maintain that wing the, the last wing the demolished wing is on that side and they turn it into offices but yeah I don't know if, if I made sense talking about it <laughs> but basically they started demolishing that end right and they decided to keep it because it was weirdly off the square that they're trying to make so but they already started construction on that side for offices so instead of just demolishing this to even it out they just kept it so yeah there's a little little wing right about there also I don't know if you can see the little flag out there so there's a the little flag and that's the 
big flag I was telling you about. If that flag is raised all the way up, it means to say that the president is there right now. So as of today, the president is actually there in the office working somewhere safe and secure inside. So someone is assigned to lower the flag or raise the flag. Raise the flag if the president is there, lower the flag if he's not there. So, fun fact. So right behind me, just in front of the government palace itself, is a little shanty. It's been here for a very long time. This is as a protest for indigenous people and their acceptance and their presence here in Argentina. We all know that Argentina is composed of a lot of immigrants from Europe during the great wave of immigration, migration. But now they're starting to recognize the indigenous people of Argentina. So this installation is here and it's been here for a very long time now. Just behind me is the statue of a general, it's, I think it's General San Martin, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they had a sort of memorial, this is something new, and if you're wondering what it is, this is a memorial of the lives lost during the COVID-19 pandemic. It, it started with just family members putting stones with the names and dates of birth and death in this plaza and then people started coming in and putting in their own stones and their memorials and from that moment on once it got to a limit of that stones all of that stairs were occupied with memorials the city decided to cover it and made it a sort of permanent memorial for COVID-19. As we walk towards the middle of Plaza de Mayo, there is a big, looks like Athena warrior obelisk in the middle. And it says, founding of this park itself, it's May 25, 1810, hence the Plaza de Mayo. If you happen to be walking around and you notice this white painting, they're just not ordinary paintings. They actually are the scarf that the women of Argentina put on their head. That scarf is famous for um, a protest or a group of people that are looking for their children, their family members that were lost during children of lost lost children of women. See that? They are wearing it in their head. So that scarf it represents the movement of finding lost family members during the great revolution here in Argentina and so there's actually two groups the mothers and the abuelas the abuelas or the, and or the mothers they actually come here just like today I haven't seen them yet they gonna walk around here around the Plaza de Mayo to protest and continue looking for justice and for their lost family members. The group that's responsible for this um, revolution are called Madres de la Plaza and Pueblo de las Alraza. The group is known as the Madres de Plaza de Mayo. They also have the Abuelas. I 
told you about. It is a big organization here. It continues to find justice for lost family members. So they're setting up camp here or tents for people to come and um, help continue to find justice. Remember I told you about this street that they want to make a straight line from the obelisk and Casa Rosada. So it's exactly in line and of course the street is called Avenida de Mayo or May Avenue if I'm not mistaken with my translation. Also if you notice the contrast of this architectures from these two buildings. So on your left is I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure. I thought it was a church, but it's not a church. So why I know? Because every government building here in Argentina is required to put a flag. So there's a flag there. So this is very his Spanish era architectural design thing with the the roof is like clay you know what what do you call this clay shilling things yes and on your right is very European French design it reminds me really of France like those rooftop and even this corner building so yeah so there's a contrast of architectural design here but let's go let's go walk a little bit towards avenida de mayo and see what they have when i tell you it reminds me of europe paris in general look at this right truly is I'm amazed on the structures that they have here and the architecture in general, especially here in Centro or the downtown area of the city. And also there subway, there's an escalator going down, just like in Paris. That's what I said, that most of the the bus. Most of the facilities and stores are closed today because it's a holiday and they're not kidding about it. There's like only one store open right now. And they're very serious. I'm, ser I'm, I'm telling you, when it's a holiday, it's holiday. And trivia though, in, in Argentina, Buenos Aires at that, you don't really know what time they open or they close because they decide on what time they want to do business. So it's not profit, um, how do you say it? It's, it's not profit, profit driven, it's about service and I guess mental health for the owners. It's really amazing on how they just decide to close whenever they want to. We are about to arrive at a very old coffee place. It's actually very, very famous. Um, it's very famous here in Argentina for locals and also for tourists. People actually line up just to get in. Um, it's, this place, I've seen this place on YouTube and I did a little bit of my research. It is really beautiful inside. I haven't been, to be honest. All I know is really good. See, people, this is Cafe Tortoni and people do line up just to get in here. It's like a Harry Potter coffee shop. They even have their own merchandise. That's how famous they are.
Oh, uh, here's a photo. So it's founded on 1858, and the inside is so incredible. The next place we are going to, my travel friends, is like the iconic symbol of Buenos Aires. This is where people gather when they're celebrating or they protesting, um, especially for the World Cup. Yo, this place gets really packed with everyone. When I say everyone, like the children, grandparents, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, everyone, I'm telling you everyone, they congregate in this area because I, it's such an icon. It represents, um, it's very new. This actually, this architecture is very new, but it has become the center of a lot of activities here in Buenos Aires. We are taking the longest crossing ever in my entire life. I think this is the longest crossing ever. So it's known as the longest crossing in the world, I think. Quote me or unquote me on that. So you need a lot of time to go to the end. See, I'm already 13 right here. I don't think I'm gonna reach to the end. It's like what? six blocks six small blocks right i'm stuck in the middle now i'm stuck in the middle i'm telling you that's a real long crossing hi <laughs> yeah but it's fun it's fun to be stuck in the middle of all this traffic So while I'm stuck in the middle of this traffic, there's that building over there. I know you can't see it, but that's Evita Peron. There's an art of Evita Peron. If you don't know who Evita Peron is, she is the former wife of the president, old president. I don't even want to say the other word because a lot of people, or a lot of Argentinians is going to hit me. But yeah, she is famous for the revolution here in Argentina. I'm gonna do a close up on my phone. I'll insert it right now so you can see it. It looks like she's eating a burger though, but that's not a burger, that's a microphone. And let's walk towards our next area of destination, the one I was telling you about being the center of all activities. It's, it is in the middle of Plaza de Mayo. No, not Plaza de Mayo. I'm sorry, Avenida de Mayo middle of the oldest crossing and oof, it's just so hot almost there I'll show you once we get there we are in the middle of a bus stop so multiple buses on the left and multiple buses on the right there's also a train station at the end if I'm not mistaken so this is where majority of the people take their buses. Yeah. Buenos Aires has a very vast uh, transportation system. So you don't have to worry about taking public transportation as long as you have the subic card. Because it's so accessible here. And it's also affordable. And it's clean. And it's effective. I don't know. I'm so in love with Buenos Aires. I would really hate to leave this place. So that little line right there, that's what I was talking about, my friends. That's the Obelisco in Buenos Aires. Let's go closer.
if you notice that Buenos Aires has so much flags displayed all over the city because they have such great pride for their their, their city, their country itself, um, especially when it comes to football. <laughs> Messi, yo, Messi. They have such a great team. And as this time of recording, it's still the World Cup and Argentina is going to the finals. So, if you want to notice, the street side, the crosswalk, is not black and white. It's colored blue and white, hence the reference of the flag. It's everywhere. The color, the nationalism, it's everywhere and I love it. Like it, it just beats you. You just want to stay here and enjoy it and take it all in. All right. All right, we're just gonna make a little UV on this famous Venus Iris touristic Instagram site. If you are so big into taking Instagram photos, people literally fall in line in this 94 degree heat. And you can see the line right there, my friends. Yeah. People really fall in line for this. And that's what you fall in line for. There's a big BA sign in the background with a big obelisk and flags. So, yeah, the line can get really long. Look at all that line. Yeah. Is it worth it? Maybe. It depends upon your priorities. I am just making a UE. Actually, I'm gonna do a little cross here. Oh, there's, there's a cameraman. I can't cross. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna make a UE because I'm not gonna fall in line. I already have a photo there, but not on that side. Now, moving on to our next location. Actually, this, this next location is more of my space. This is where I enjoyed... Yes, I enjoyed pastas because upon making of this video itself, I already had went inside. And I'm sure you'll like it too. Especially to my, my friends from New York City. You know what I'm getting... You know what I'm talking about once you see it. Let's just stay out of the sun, my friends. It's too hot. It's like a block away from the obelisco. And yeah. And the place that was telling you about is no other than at Teatro Colon or the Colon Theater. Oh gosh. If you ever have it, if you ever have the chance to get inside watch the show I advise that you you do it it's not that expensive the inside is beautiful the show is wonderful it's one of the best acoustics I've ever heard during a show I watch um, Fisherman of Pearls with my friend Ricardo and this is what's inside I'm gonna insert the mobile videos that I took during the show not during the show but once we, we got in but yeah you know what I mean like I don't take because that's piracy you don't take videos of shows okay but anyway that's it and this is the show I'm telling you about this is what's inside it's beautiful After that beautiful Pietro Colon, there's actually a lot of great beautiful buildings surrounding this park in the middle and it's, yo, look, um, that and there's one more behind me, yeah, it's, it's a really older facade square. If only it wasn't that hot today, I would have stayed a lot more, but yeah, 
on to the next location. Hey drama friend, my digital card got corrupted, so the rest of the videos I can't find anymore. I'm a little upset because I had a lot of um, information because I went to a few more other places. Um, yeah, but anyway, just to end the vlog, um, I did go to Recoleta Cemetery. It's another place that you have to visit when you are in Buenos Aires. Although you have to pay about 10 US dollars just to get in and they don't accept cash. They have to use, they, you have to use a credit card or a debit card to get in to buy the ticket. Um, that's Recoleta Cemetery. I'm gonna put a picture somewhere here. And of course, you don't skip Mercado Santelmo or Santelmo Market. They have so much food in that um, market and especially on the, on the weekend, on a Sunday, they have a fair that spans for blocks and blocks and blocks. There's a, there's a lot of um, clothes, artisanal goods, crafts, food um, during the fair. So there's a lot that you can buy, especially on a Sunday. So don't miss it out on a Sunday. Mercado Santo Limón. And I also went to um, the, the flower. <laughs> I can't even um, remember the name of that place. There is a big flower that's supposed to open during the day and closes at night. It's in a park. I'll put the name in the description right here. Um, it doesn't open, it doesn't close. It stays halfway open, halfway closed right now. But um, those are the places that I actually went to as well. And the, the last thing, the famous, I'll put it right here, um, the library. Ateneo Library, I think, or no, I think so. Anyway, yes, that library is one of the most beautiful libraries in the world. It's actually voted um, as one of the beautiful libraries in the world, as you can see in the picture right here. It is very beautiful. So those are the, the few places that um, I would like to add on the list from this vlog because, um, you know, I lost all my data. Anyway, if you at least find something useful from this vlog please don't forget to like this video also write some write your comments down below if you have any other questions regarding top places to visit in Buenos Aires and also please don't forget to subscribe to this channel to see more adventures like this actually this might be my last vlog for Argentina because as what I told you my um, memory card got corrupted and my data all gone so anyway i'll see you in my next future vlog thank you travel friends ciao